Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Health Careers Week, the first session of our week. Um, I am Kate Lee. I'm the Executive Director of Education and Workforce at the South Bend Regional Chamber. In the background, uh, you'll see the South Bend Regional Chamber box. That is really Allison Herzig. She's back there making all the magic happen and checking the chat and dropping links in and doing all those things because it's really hard to do that and talk at the same time. Not nearly talented enough for that. So we appreciate everyone being here. Quick housekeeping. Um, all attendees are muted, but we still want to hear from you. So please use the chat function to ask any questions or share comments. The session is scheduled for 30 minutes. As a reminder, reminder the panels are being recorded for year-round career exploration. So we encourage you to share these with other students, with um, your parents. Uh, these are really for anyone. These are great for high school students and adults and middle school students to just kind of explore the opportunities for education and careers in our community. So we want to thank our sponsors for Health Careers Week, especially presenting partner IUSB, who is sponsoring today's session and our featured speakers. Please visit the Health Careers Week landing page to learn more about our sponsors, businesses, and amazing careers in healthcare in our region. So we are excited to welcome Jenny Duranik, Assistant Dean of the Vera Z. Dwyer College of Health Sciences at IU South Bend. She has earned a doctorate in educational leadership, a master of kinesiology, and a bachelor of arts in athletic training. Who my brain is tired already. <laughs> and Dr. Duranik also practices as a clinical athletic trainer and is joined today by three IUSB students, Maria Gamez, and I hope I did that right, Jay Martinez, and Swapin Kaur, 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 Kaur. You're gonna tell me how to do that when you introduce yourself. Um, and they are gonna share their stories with you as well so you can see uh, what your next step might be if you jumped into IUSB into one of their amazing opportunities. So we are gonna kick it off by asking Dr. Duranik to share what is going on. I'm gonna stop my share so she can share because she does have a slide. Um, to tell us, uh, give us an overview of the courses and the opportunities at IU South Bend and what's available and a little bit about how they connect to the job opportunities in our community. Yeah, absolutely. Well, good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining. I'm excited to talk to you about what we have to offer here in the College of Health Sciences at IUSB. So I'm gonna share a screen. We have several programs within our college. And so I'm gonna share a screen here. Um, can give me a thumbs up if you guys can see it. Uh, good. Okay, great. So um, this just highlights some of the programs that we have here in the Dwyer College of Health Sciences. And I'm going to walk you through a little bit of them um, just to give you an overview of what we have. And then we're going to get so going on some questions and interact a little bit. Um, feel free to ask any questions at any time. We're happy to answer them. So the first program I want to talk about is Applied Health Sciences. This has a little computer next to it. This is a fully online program with all of IU. Um, and there's two different tracks that students can go into with the Applied Health Sciences. Community Health Educator, with it, which is Public Health, and Health Administration. Uh, the second program we talk about is Clinical Laboratory Science. Clinical Laboratory Scientist, we have Maria, who's a CLS student um, uh, here with us. Um, and this is the kind of that behind the scenes aspect of lab work that when you go to a hospital setting or you have some sort of work done in um, an office, that lab is taken, a urinalysis, blood work, uh, all kinds of uh, scopes um, look or examined by our CLS, by our medical laboratory specialists. We also have dental hygiene. Um, and within our dental hygiene, we have two routes. We have individuals who are earning a bachelor's degree, which is what we have here at IUSB but also people who have an associate's degree in dental hygiene, which is also a pathway that's been in the past, a completion program. So you can take that associate's degree and earn a bachelor's degree, which increases usually your pay earning, which is really valuable. Um, we also have health sciences. Um, health sciences often gets confused with the rest of the college of the Dwyer College of Health Sciences, but we have four different areas that students can study within this. Health promotion, which is similar to that online community health educator track, where it's really all about public health, which, oh my gosh, isn't that what we've been experiencing with COVID and everything else that, that navigates through public health. Uh, rehabilitation science. Rehab science sets students up to have the prerequisites for graduate school, for athletic training like me, 
Um, occupational therapy and physical therapy. Physical therapy and occupational therapy are really, really common um, pathways that students want to go into. Uh, we also have speech language pathology concentration within that to get the prerequisites needed for graduate school, as well as explore a huge amount of other opportunities within speech and hearing fields. And then sports and exercise science. So this is so broad. You can go into personal training. You can do um, sports marketing and management, all kinds of aspects within um, sports and exercise science. It really has a science behind what people do. Uh, Jay, who's on our call, Jay is a student um, in health sciences, and he's aspiring to be an occupational therapist when he's done here at IUSB. We also have the nursing program, um, and Swapan, who's on the call, she's a pre-nursing student um, and is, is heading down that path into nursing. Hopefully, you guys are familiar with what the profession of nursing is, um, and it is so needed. All of these are so needed here in our community. And then we have radiography and medical imaging. Radiography is actually an associate's degree that we offer here at IUSB, um, and this allows students to do um, x-rays and be involved in that imaging, and then we also have have an opportunity for a bachelor's degree to extend on into ultrasound um, and other aspects of medical imaging. I do think it's valuable to point out that here in the College of Health Sciences, we also have graduate programs. So we have a master's of science in occupational therapy. We have a master's of science in nursing, as well as a master's of science in speech language pathology. All three of those groups are through the Elkhart Center. Um, they are mainly housed in the Elkhart Center. That's where they have all of their education and training. Um, and the cool thing about a lot of our courses and our coursework, which I think you guys are gonna ask some of these questions, I'm gonna stop my share here, um, is that we are really uh, interwoven and interconnected. We really believe in interprofessional practice. And what that means is that we ensure that our students are being educated together because occupational therapists are gonna work with nurses and nurses are gonna work with speech language pathologists who are gonna work with dental hygienists. And so we really believe that it's important that you understand the scope of all of these different professions so that when you are out in the health professions, you understand what that looks like and what the scope is for each individual group. That's awesome, thank you so much. And you, I, I, I've, I was, I was a journalism major, but I did work in healthcare for like 20 years. I worked for a nursing home company. I worked yeah. for Center for Hospice and I also worked at St. Joe Med Center. So awesome. I raised money into marketing. I didn't actually touch any patients. Nobody wanted me to do that. But um, <laughs> it's still I, a really crucial part of healthcare, right? So those are some important. of those secret behind the scene jobs that people don't realize that, that if you don't want to deal with blood and you don't want to deal with all of that aspect, which like Maria here must like blood, um, that you know, you can, there's a ton of other opportunities within healthcare that are often forgot about and not really realized as part of the big picture. Yeah, but what you see when you earn that, that kind of umbrella role is the interaction of, as Jenny said, all the different pieces and parts and how crucial it is for everybody to understand when you pass the baton to somebody else who can better meet the needs of the patient. So Absolutely. I love that IU South Bend does that. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna hop into some questions for our students who are on the call. They're easy. It will not even be hard for you. And um, I also encourage those who are listening in to drop any questions they have in the chat. So I'm going to ask um, all of you, all of you, all of you to answer the same question. Um, how did you determine what direction you wanted to go for um, after you graduated from high school? Like kind of when did you decide that and how did you decide and what do you hope to do after you graduate? Kind of what are your short and long term goals? So I'm going to go in the order of my screen. So Swapan, Swapan wins. And tell me how to pronounce your last name. Um, it's Core. Core. Yeah. Um, I know I always wanted to be in the medical field, but I think like junior and senior year when the COVID pandemic happened, it really reinforced it because I like nurses were on the front lines and they really helped people directly. So that really reinforced my like belief that I wanted to be a nurse. And after I finish my bachelor's at IUSB, I wanna um, be a nurse anesthesiast and do my master's. That's wonderful. And I mean, that's just one of those things, a really great illustration of how in health careers, you could start as a CNA or a home health aide or what, and you just could keep stacking different certificates, education degrees on top of that and really go in so many different directions. So. Think, how old do you think you were when you decided you wanted to be in healthcare? 
Um, I think I always wanted to be in healthcare, but I feel like I went back and forth. Like when I was younger, I said I wanted to be a doctor, but you know, obviously you get older, you realize like what goes into it. So I think like it changed a little. And I think like COVID really like reinforced that I wanted to be a nurse. Awesome. Thank you for that. So Jay, what about you? I think I was around like 22 when I figured out what I wanted to do that I always knew that I wanted to help people. So I think going into the the medical field was was something that I decided around like, yeah, like 22, 23. And I, I ended up deciding to go for a sports and exercise uh, degree because it's so diverse, as uh, Dr. D was saying, you can go into personal training, the sports and marketing and stuff like that. Like it's just it's a it's a really broad degree. So my uh, my long term goal is to actually use that degree to get into an occupational therapy program. Excellent. And I'm hoping to you know, get in there and then graduate from that in a, in a couple of years. So what would that entail when you pursue the, the next step in your occupational therapy to get um, that, to get in that program? Well, I would have to apply sometime this year. So this year from like July to, to October and stuff like that. And I'm actually taking a couple of classes already, like a senior seminar that's helping me get helping me get prepared for it. Like we're doing interviews, like mock interviews and stuff like that. We're, we're writing up resumes and doing cover letters. So, so um, we're, we're, it's, it's definitely preparing me to, for the next step. Wonderful. For graduate school, similar to what Swapan was saying with being a nurse anesthetist, that there's often classes that are needed, prerequisite classes. We have professional advisors within the College of Health Sciences that if you walk in and you say, hey, I'm interested in occupational therapy, they're going to help guide you along with what prerequisites are needed, as well as relying on your faculty and your teachers to help guide that. You know, that's something that many of us have been through with our own professional training and understand those prerequisites are needed. Like Jay and I have met to talk about what classes he still has left in order to qualify to be able to apply to the OT program. Um, And so that mentorship is really a huge component of what we are at IUSB. That's wonderful. How about you, Maria? So for me, um, I knew I've always wanted to help people since I was like in middle school and more so when my mom, she, she, had, my little brother was born with like a genetic disorder. So I knew I've always wanted to go into something within the sciences. Um, now being in the CLS program, this helps me get my hands-on experience with the illnesses rather than getting hands-on with the people. So I think that's why this program is so amazing because it opens your eyes to like different aspects of like behind the scenes rather than in front of a patient. So what do you hope to do? Oh my goodness. Um, right term. now I'm right now I'm currently working in a laboratory here in Laporte and right there we're doing a lot of what we've been learning, but my ultimate goal is to go back into a microbiology department. Yeah, it's pretty interesting seeing what goes down in those laboratories. So you'd be doing research? What would that look like? I think I'm more so the one who likes to see what's wrong with the people and actually try to figure out what illnesses they have to give them better treatment. So it'd be like laboratory services. Is that where you work? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Interesting. Our CLS people like looking at like bugs and all kinds of stuff, you know, when you have a Petri dish and you put it on a slide or another one and seeing how they grow and seeing how different medicines interact, like COVID is a great example of this, Mm -hmm. right? What medicines are actually interacting with it in order to kill that germ, that bacteria, that virus, um, in order to help continue the diagnosis and continue the treatment. Uh Yeah. Like you're a detective. Oh yeah. It's so fun. (laughs) Forensics is actually a big part of clinical laboratory science. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Again, all those different ways that you can go. So now I'd like to ask the students, what, what classes did you take in high school? The two, it's a two-parter. So like what kind of classes you take in high school that you feel really well prepared you for your next steps? Um, And Jay, I know you started, you found your path a little bit later, like what led you there? And then also, um, like what was your first job or other experience that you feel was really foundational? Maybe even at the time you didn't know that it was going to be foundational, but what really helps you where you are right now? And so I'll start with Jay on this one. Well, I knew, well, like I was saying, I knew I wanted to be um, 
in the medical field, like it was around like 21 because my son was born with congenital diaphragmatic hernia. So I was, what I was watching him go through, you know, a lot of therapy and stuff like that for the first year of his life. So he was doing like, you know, speech therapy, I had a therapist come over, occupational therapist come over to help him like try to walk, try to eat and stuff like that. So that's, that's like around the time that I knew uh, my first job, it was actually, um, it wasn't in like a, like the healthcare or anything. I actually, my first job was a, a tree trimming business. So I would cut trees by the power line. And uh, I guess it just taught me that, you know, if you really want something, you're going to have to kind of go for it. Like I had to learn how to save money and stuff like that. So to make sure I, I you know, had the money to pay for college. So, so yeah, it's, it's kind of like, that's, that's what it taught me my first job. Excellent. Thank you. What about you, Swapan? Um, in high school, I don't think I took too many classes that really related to like nursing because in high school, I wasn't like sure of like a lot of options. I think I don't remember the exact class, but I did take one class. I think it was like medical sciences, something like that at Penn, actually. And I really enjoyed it. And I always knew like I enjoyed this kind of classes like biology, chemistry. So I think like that's really important, like to take those kind of classes in high school to make sure you enjoy that kind of stuff before, like, you know, starting your college career. Excellent. And have, did you have any kind of a part time job while you're in high school? No, no. Um, I actually volunteered at the St. Joseph Hospital for like three years. So that so, was nice. Yeah. And you probably what do you. What like what is your big takeaway from volunteering at the hospital? Is there anything you feel like it opened your eyes by put, having that experience, how it changed your perspective? Yeah, it was like um, we didn't really work directly with the patients. It was more like the outside jobs, like helping people like find where they're supposed to be going, stuff like that. But still, it was like nice to like work and see like the other healthcare providers like helping patients and all that. You were a junior volunteer. Yeah, <laughs> I remember those from when I worked there. Love the junior yeah. volunteers. How about you, Maria? So for me in high school, I didn't have much. So when I went into college, I was kind of like, I don't know what path to take because I knew what I ultimately wanted to be at, at one time was a genetic counselor. And so I was put on the path of biology with a minor of psychology and I enjoyed every single course. And then once I got done with my bachelor's, I didn't know what to do anymore because I couldn't, I tried for two years to get into a genetic counseling program and they were so hard to get into. I couldn't. So I was like, what's next? I'm not sure what to do anymore with this degree. So then I ended up finding um, a lab in South Bend, the South Bend Med Foundation. And in there, they were hiring for a microbiology and that was my second job. And then that's when I got my hands-on experience of how to work in a micro lab. And it was just interesting to see all the stuff, the stuff that would come in. And that's when I knew, I'm like, wow, this is pretty neat. And uh, that's where I found out about MLTs and MLSs. And that's when I'm like, wow, I think I should actually start doing this because it's pretty interesting to work behind the scenes. So that job definitely helped me get into that mindset of like, wow, the behind the scenes be in the science world. That's I always say like this career pathway thing. I said, you have to be ready to take the exit and entrance ramps too, because there's, mm -hmm. you have to find a veer, which oh, leads yeah. into actually this leads in really well to a question. The Penn human body systems class has asked, can you give us a sense of the competitive nature of the medical programs you offer? So this will be a question for Jenny. Are they invited to a certain number of students or, or are they limited to a certain number of students? And what qualities do you look for in your prospective applicants? Sure, that, I mean, that's an excellent question. So thanks, Penn. Um, so our, each of our programs, except for health sciences and the applied health sciences have caps on the number of students within uh, the programs. So they are uh, application-based programs. So again, there's prerequisite courses similar to what I was saying about graduate school. There's prerequisite courses to get you the best possibility to apply for the, the, the actual programs. So clinical laboratory science, um, Marie is a great example that she already has a bachelor's degree. So she's a second degree student. Um, for that program, we have two different pathways, second degree students who are coming in, filling up some additional courses and continuing to earn a bachelor's in that, that program as well as 
traditional students who come in as first year students and navigate through. The CLS program houses about 20 students um, and that is application based to get in there. Um, that program at this point hasn't been incredibly competitive, not because it's not a challenging field, um, but just it's one of our newer programs in the College of Health Sciences. Um, nursing accepts two cohorts of students a year, ones that start in the fall and ones that start in the spring. And they take about 30, 34 students depending on the application pool. Radiography takes students um, after their first year typically, um, and they take 22 students into that program. So um, that's that. And then uh, dental hygiene takes uh, 21 students in their program. Now, they are pretty competitive programs, uh, you know, and that's where there's lots of value in ensuring that you're connecting with professors, you're connecting with advisors to ensure that you are meeting the prerequisites needed. So usually the minimum to er grade to earn in classes is a C. Anything below a C isn't going to make you eligible for a program. And I think this is really valuable to say as we're talking to high school students, Right now, we're doing a lot of dual credit coursework. So um, that is really something to pay attention to, that that English class or speech class that you may be taking in high school, your grade in that, if it's counting towards college credit, matters in relation to this overall application process for these clinical programs. And I think sometimes that can trip students up when they come into the, the school setting. Um, like, like I mentioned, they all have prerequisite courses. So we design, we have degree maps that are designed to help you take anatomy and physiology and statistics or whatever else is necessary for you to meet those um, requirements. The other question on there is what qualities do you look for in prospective applicants? And that's, that's an excellent question. I think it varies based on the program. They all have um, individual differences with the application process. Radiography requires an interview um, and, an, and an essay. Uh, nursing just requires an essay. Dental hygiene requires an essay. Um, and CLS has an application process that everything is evaluated in there. So it depends on the competitiveness of that program. I do anticipate that we are going to have an increase in our number of students. Um, if you've been paying attention to any of the news sources out there, we have recently um, announced that we have a Dwyer Healthcare Simulation Center that is being um, built and developed right now as we speak. Uh, and that is specifically going to be for our nursing and radiography programs. It's really going to expand the opportunities and expand that hands-on experience to help students be more qualified as they get into the healthcare setting. Um, I just had a thought about that, the qualities. So I want you to think about your own experiences in healthcare. So think about going into the physician's office, or if you have an emergent visit, or you've had physical therapy, think about the qualities that you have liked in the people that you work with, compassion, empathy, understanding, uh, positive listening and active listening, good communication skills. Um, oftentimes these can't be learned skills, you know, they're things that you develop over time and keep open minded to those things. Um, and, and I want quality, competent healthcare professionals working on me, working on my kids. Um, and so that's a really, really valuable thing to think about as you kind of keep navigating through um, the different aspects of, of your life and your interaction with the various healthcare professions. That's awesome. Thanks. And I, I think one thing that uh, there's so much that you just don't know about what's in the community until you know. And right. I think the fact that IU South Bend has a master's in nursing program here right in our region is a real gift to any mm -hmm. students who are looking to pursue that next step in a nursing career as well. Absolutely. So there was really good foresight in putting that in place and making sure that was available. So I think it's great. So I have a building on that. And that's this is the kind of stuff you can learn. Like, and I don't know if there's a way for high school students to explore if there's a list anywhere that says, here's some great classes to take in high school to prepare if you're interested in these programs. But we should talk about that if there's not a list like that. There should be a list. Like yeah. That. I think I would, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a plug in that. Sorry to interrupt you. Okay. Um, you know, so often when you get to, to college, there's general education courses that you have to take. And so sometimes it's like, oh, why am I taking this course on? I shouldn't name programs, but like philosophy or why am I taking a communications course or whatever. General education is the core of what higher ed is established on. And that's just the nature of the way that it is. But what I would encourage you to do is you navigate through those 
is try to see the ones that are relevant to your healthcare field. So I'm going to call it Swapan again because she's in um, one of my general education courses that's all about the Flint water crisis, where we're looking at the public health view of the Flint water crisis. And so she sought out that class and knew that it was about something healthcare related. And so that can help maintain and ensure that you are taking courses to help you reach your goal and continue to have purpose in what you're studying in, in school. I would say there's no wasted knowledge. Sometimes right. you're not sure why you took that class until maybe 20 years later, but right. somehow- like geology, like, oh, I still oh. remember the different rocks that I- <laughs> There you go. So I see another question. Do you have pharmaceutical programs or classes? Yeah, so we don't have a pharmaceutical program, but our biology, our biological sciences program has a track um, that helps prepare students for pharmacy school um, and had, had, meet the prerequisite courses for that program. Okay, excellent. So, and then after they get those courses, if they complete that there, they could transfer, those those credits would transfer to another, like, there's, is there a transfer agreement? Yeah, so it would be, so um, to become a pharmacist or to become a pharmacist is an additional degree. So you would earn a bachelor's degree and then apply for graduate school. Gotcha. A lot of our healthcare professions are moving to that. So maybe you guys have heard of that, that um, graduate school is required for the next step. Um, and that is because we realize the value of our healthcare professionals. And we want to ensure that we're providing the best education possible that our, like my pharmacist knows exactly what medication is being administered. Um, and so that's where you'll hear a lot about graduate school being a requirement. One of the things, and Jay's a good example of this, one of the things I often recommend is to make sure that you're taking time to explore what those fields are like. There's lots of job opportunities available for students in, in high school to volunteer or to explore what these might, professions might look like. Uh, our healthcare community knows that healthcare providers are needed in the future. And so if it's shadowing, you know, it takes a little extra work to go out there and do it. Um, but it helps provide you a real true framework of what opportunities are available in all the health professions. And many of our high schools are now working on work-based learning opportunities, which will right. be great. And so the right. chamber is working closely to try to get the businesses engaged to kind of do their part to make this absolutely whole work. So I'm going to close with a speed round for the students. And um, Jenny can also jump in here if she'd like. What should students know about the Dwyer School that they can't find in a brochure? Community educators experience, like what, what, what should they know that you won't find it on the website? So I am going to, who am I gonna start with? Let me look here. I'm gonna start with Swapan. Um, I think because it's like not as big as of a school, I think it's really nice. Like you can make relationships with different professors and different people. And like, I know personally my friends who are going to like bigger universities, they're like, like when I tell them that I talk with my professor, they always say like, I, didn't, I don't even get a chance to talk with them. So I think it's like really valuable to like form relationships with your professors. And it's like a really nice environment and super helpful. Like if you need any help, there's always a lot of people to help you. Nice. Jay, what about you? Yeah, I agree with uh, I agree with uh, Swapan. It's it's more it's really like a, a community based school. You know, what I mean, you get to build relationships with um, a lot of the professors and stuff like that, and you could possibly find you know a, a mentor to help you out with everything that you know what your career path and what you're going for. So I think that's uh, I think that's actually really nice. So great, and Maria. It's funny because what they both said is genuinely true. It's so nice to have this. It's a small community. And even in the CLS program, we're in the same building. You are with the same like people. And it's so nice how close you get to the professors and like the type of conversations you end up having. It's just nice to feel like you're at home at, at school. It's And at the same time, you're learning and you can like bounce off ideas. And it doesn't feel like a professor to a student it feels kind of like a friend to a student it's like really nice I genuinely love the vibe and the feel and I would not regret doing any of this so I would definitely do schooling again and IUSB was a good good option for me awesome so Paige Risser so you students might be seeing this box your way who's that Paige Risser she's taking notes on all of this because she's the one who's in charge of marketing and making sure all of you know about these great programs so we thank Paige for being here as well and Jenny do you have a answer to that question too about what do you want students to know that they're not going to find in a brochure on a website? 
So I didn't plug them to say that, but that's exactly where I was going to go is that we in the College of Health Sciences truly care about students, like genuinely care and will do anything to help make sure you're reaching your goals and going where you need to. And that is an incredible thing. I went to a really small college um, for my undergraduate experience and this fits, this is home. This is where we really are ensuring that students belong. Um, and stay, we know our students stay within the local community for the most part. And so um, it is, it's just really valuable to have that investment in our community. Wonderful. Thank you. So a huge thanks to Dr. Duranik and to Maria, Jay, and Swapan for joining us today. Please, to all who are listening, uh, visit the Health Careers Week um, landing page where you can find the business directory. You can find pathway pages, um, learn more about these different careers and the educational pathways to get there. Um, and those are all on the Chamber website. And I know Allison's dropped all the links into the chat. So it's right there for you. And you can learn more about the Dwyer College of Health Sciences and Health Careers on their website as well. But you already have the inside scoop because you have students who are students and a professor who are telling you. So thank you all very much. Appreciate it. And everybody go forth and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for the opportunity.